Hey, we're back. We're back at the New York Auto Show with continuing coverage here on Be Terrific. I'm joined by the uh, by Peter I'm Hogefang. Hogefang from Alpha, David Milch also. We're going to talk about the new Alphas that you guys have, which are pretty exciting. Uh, you're coming back in the United States with a pretty big, pretty big presence. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, yeah, Alpha, it's perfect timing for us. So we just introduced our uh, uh, Alfa Romeo Julia, which obviously people that know Alfa Romeo, name we have back yep. from the 60s, a true sports sedan. We just introduced that vehicle. It's in dealerships actually right now. We have about 168 dealerships in the United States. And then the good news here, or the great news for us for this auto show is obviously you have the Stelvio, which is the SUV, the midsize SUV, premium SUV version of it. We're showing to the, to the North American market uh, here uh, in New, at the New York Auto Show. And that car is not yet available in the United States? Not yet available, it'll be available this summer. So we'll have the car Fantastic. relatively quickly in market. How is that car trimmed out? Um, so you're, the, the Stelvio, our SUV, is based on the Giorgio platform. It's the same platform that uh, we use for Julia. The cool part about the Giorgio platform is it's actually a dedicated program just for Alfa Romeo. So it's a platform designed for Alfa Romeo. So that's, you know, obviously, if you talk about Alfa Romeo, you've got to have driving dynamics, you've got to have handling. So the good part about it is like this vehicle was, dry, was designed to be an Alfa. Alphas will always be a driver's vehicle. So it's very well equipped, obviously. It's about, you know, 184, 184, 185 inches long, long right in, in the center of the premium midsize SUV. We offered with the 505 horsepower engine, the Quattrofolio. It's, it's amazing, so much horsepower out of that vehicle. You know, obviously saw the same engine in the Alfa Romeo Giulia, which we set the record time at the Nuremberg Ring, seven minutes, 32 seconds, the fastest four-door ever on the Nuremberg Ring. So obviously we're gonna, we're looking forward to taking that car to the Nuremberg Ring as well to make it the fastest SUV ever on the Nuremberg Ring, so. Well, what's wonderful about Alfa, besides the engineering and all the technical things that we'll talk about, is the romance. I mean, Alfa Romeo really has a romance to yep. it. I remember having my first Alfa Romeo from uh, the mid-70s, about 75, 76, to the mid-80s for about 10 years. It's sitting in a garage in, in France now with a, a dear friend of mine, a two-seater spider, red two-seater spider. And there was nothing like getting in that car and driving along uh, yep. the coast. Uh, I was living in Boston at the time. It was just fantastic, and I have such fond memories. And of course, the line has expanded and the engineering has continued. You do still make the two-seater, yes? Yes, we do have a Spider still. <laughs> yeah. We do have a spider. <laughs> yeah, we have a Spider and a Coupe, so it's a 4C Spider and a 4C Coupe that we uh, offer here in North America. That's actually the vehicle we returned to North America with. Um, in January of 2015, we introduced the Spider version of the 4C. And the cool part is, too, the detail on that vehicle. You know, uh -huh. It's a carbon fiber monocoque chassis. You know, normally you see vehicles cost you know, $200,000 and more. This vehicle you know, starts an MSRP of $56,000. If you go for the for the Spider, sixty-six thousand dollar MSRP. You got the unique uh, rear mid-engine, or sorry, rear engine mid-engine uh, in the vehicle. It's a one point seven liter with two hundred thirty-seven horsepower, zero to sixty four point one seconds. It's a true driver car. I think and it's you just so made cool. a sale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I have to get enough. And what? what I, I want to also speak to your point about Alpha. It's so funny because obviously we're gone for about you know twenty years out of the market. But everywhere I go, people have stories on Alfa Romeo. And it's always like, it's either a cool person, so I'm, you know, you're a cool guy. Oh, so, you. you know, it's always a cool person, a cool professor that had one, you know. And I think that's, that's something that we're so thankful for, too. And we have to thank our owners club for that as well. You know, the, the, the passionate owners for Alfa Romeo here in the U.S. Well, I had, the, got, is I had it all through it's medical school in my training. And after working for 24, 36 hours, getting a few hours of sleep, you, you want to do something just to get completely away, and you got in that Alpha, and you would exactly. you know, take it out on 95 and yeah. just go for an hour or two, and you forgot whatever was going on in the past two days. Yeah, my, my introduction to Alpha was, you know, when I, back, I wasn't, I was out of college, but uh, a very good friend of mine owned a ton of Alphas, including a, uh, a Callaway GTV. Oh, nice. You know, GTV 6 Callaway. Yeah. So, Talk about an electric uh, car. Yeah, so and you know your fun. cars, Fletch. I mean, I did. Yeah. I had no idea that yeah. you had this history <laughs> behind the wheel. And I mean, I hear you talking the the torque and the uh, yep. you know the and all the other technical specs. But this is in your blood. Oh, yeah. That's what Alpha does. It brings up the car, the car. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like, exactly. You know, it's always exactly. So you, you're reintroducing the yep. line. How's that gone? You're like two years into it now. Yep. Yep. So very, very well for us. Obviously, we're very fortunate. Again, uh, the 4C and the 4C Spider are doing what they're supposed to do. It's a, it's a small car, but it drives a lot of passion, a lot of interest in the brand. So we were kind of like more grassroots approach. Um, from a dealer network, as I mentioned, we have 168 dealers in the United States right now. And with Julia as well, the demand is very high. We see a very short days on lot, which obviously that's how I get, you know, how we measure success. Mm -hmm. The Quattrofolio has been very well received. And, 
you know, just now, uh, you know, we, we uh, received two awards, you know, by Popular Mechanics, as well as New York Daily News as well for best luxury sedan as well. So I think nice. it's coming back like that. We get good write-ups, the press is good, the enthusiasm is great. But I think what I think what drives our success is that we truly stay true to what Alfa Romeo has to be. And it has to be a driver vehicle with the latest right. technologies. It's got to handle, like even our four-cylinder engine, if you take a look at it, it's a 280 horsepower four-cylinder engine with a zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds. I mean, mm. these are numbers that, you know, you know, five, six years ago, people did not expect out of a four-cylinder. So we're very fortunate to be able to deliver that. We've got a great dealer network and, you know, great ambassadors as well. People, you know, talk about Alpha and, you know. Go ahead. the Quattroporio, what's, what's the engine in that car? So that's a 2.9 liter uh, V6 engine. It's a 90 degree engine. It has a, a twin turbo engine in right. there. So it's uh, okay. 505 horsepower, 443 foot, uh, found, uh, foot uh, Sorry, 443 foot pounds. foot-bound of torque, yeah. Say that three times fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can, hey, and I think course, by now I can do and it. And attention to the detailing and to the style, that's always been there with Alpha, and what's wonderful is that has been sustained. Correct. And even if you look at our grill, correct, our traditional V-shaped grill, that is still on this Alpha today. Yeah, right. You know, like, mm. it's like, the people recognize it right away, so that's very important to us. And obviously, this, in this segment, you know, what you see in these segments, obviously dominated by, you know, the, the German imports, you know, they needed something different. I think that's what Julia is delivering very well, you know. Mm. Wonderful. And you also have a two-seat convertible. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a four-seat right. spider. Yep, yep, that's the spider version of the okay. four-seat. Yep, and that's in market. And then we have the Julia and then the Stelvio. Okay, yep. great. Is the convertible roof on the Spider automatic, or do you... Uh... It's actually how it's supposed to be. A little canvas roof, you roll up, you throw in the back, right behind the engine, there's enough space to do it. It's, it's it. really cool, yeah. That's great. Yeah, even those little details still make you feel like you're driving a car. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly, exactly. It's not a throwback, it's a throw forward. Yeah. Right? That's <laughs> the way, you know, the driving experience should right. be. Yep, I agree. But they're all they're all new cars with the, the current driver assist, driver aids. Yep. You know, so you're still you, you have the, the character of the old car but but the niceties of of you know And that's a good point because we have an all Alpha Romeos, we offer a DNA okay. switch, you know, that's for dynamic, natural and advanced efficiency mode. So we offer the customer to drive in advanced efficiency mode. Hey, you no know, of you you know, daily driving you get the best efficiency out of your car, but to your point, hey, once you have a long day at work you put the vehicle in dynamic mode, and it really changes the behavior of the car. It changes shift pa patterns, and the benefit of electric power steering, it changes the steering of the vehicle. It really gives you an idea, like, okay, now I'm you know, performance driving. And another little detail is we have actually steering column-mounted pedal shifters, like you used to see on the, old, on the race cars and oh. the Ferraris, and they're cool. aluminum, and the, the thing quits, shifts in like you know, 100 milliseconds, so it's a very quick shifting transmission, and I drive one myself, and I just can't help using them all the time myself. So. <laughs> well, I love the paddles. It's interesting, we were just talking to some folks from uh, Chevrolet and from Mazda, and of course, they're all focusing, the big companies, on you know the electric cars and the sure. driverless initiatives and so forth. For Alpha, um, you have to be aware of those things, sure. but careful about diving in too deep too quickly. How do you balance that? So I think that's a great point, correct? The industry is going, you know, more and more autonomous driving, more and more electric vehicles. Obviously, that's a trend that's going on, but we still see there's a large market for Alfa Romeo. And obviously, we, like you mentioned before, we offer all the latest in safety, you know, uh, autonomous, you know, the, the, uh, full stop braking system, adaptive cruise controls, everything that everybody offers. But we also make sure that people still enjoy driving. And a lot of people still enjoy driving. And that's, I think, what Alfa Romeo will find a unique spot in the market. For. Can you turn the nannies off or or do you have a, a fail safe where? So um, you can, so in, in regards to like the traction control, for example, if you have an Alfa Romeo uh, Julia Quattrofolio, you can turn any assist off on the car. There's no assist, nothing. That's a true driver. Because this is a car you can drive to work every day and take to the track and still set a Nuremberg record time. Because when we set our Nuremberg uh, uh, record time of seven minutes and 32 seconds, that was actually on street tires. It was not race tires. It was a normal Julia Quattrofolio mm -hmm. we took there, automatic, you know, with the pedal shifters. And in, in the race mode, so everything was right, right. turned off. You get the dual mode exhaust as well. So you get the really Alfa Romeo unique exhaust sound. and. You know, so yeah, we, we still allow that, again, speaking to what the brand stands for. Right, right. You're getting me much too excited here about <laughs> Alfa Romeo coming back into my life. I'm gonna, my wife is not going to be happy if I start to uh, pull out a checkbook and uh, well, put a deposit down. I'm going to blame somebody here on this. Blame me. That's, It'll uh, be a pleasure, though. Yeah, I just, right over there. I <laughs> understand, Fletcher. I understand. Um, I was going to ask a question. I, I can't remember. The, the nice thing is, is, is you're allowing the, the, the full control. There's a... There's a very well-known auto manufacturer that just got into a little bit of trouble with its its own owners club, where certain models of their new cars they won't allow on the track anymore because you cannot disable the auto brake system, the auto safe stop hmm. on the car, and it now becomes a hazard at the racetrack. 
Um, so it's, it's nice that you're you're making it where yep. if your owner chooses, they can exploit the vehicle for, for what it's designed exactly. for. Exactly, and I still offer the opportunity to do normal right. driving if, if you don't want. And I think that's what, it's kind of always been in Alpha's DNA. I mean, if you go back to the 60s, the original Julia, you know, that was a, a car you could take on the track. Right. You could drive, you know, like our car now. It's like a near 50-50 weight distribution. It's all thought off. And one of the cool things is, too, when the Julia was developed, they developed the Quattrofolio first. So the high horsepower vehicle, the ultimate, you know, performance sedan, they developed that one first. And then they developed down towards the, the main, the, the volume level. So the Julia and right. Julia Ti, which you still get the same steering setup. We carry over carbon fiber drive shaft, which every Julia and every Stelvio will have. So it really focused on like, let's build the ultimate mm -hmm. car and then work our mm -hmm. way down, but still try to deliver on that, what Alfa Romeo is, is known for and why people buy Alfa Romeos. And one of the things that Be Terrific tries to do for our viewers, our terrifics as we call them, is give them a sense of what goes on behind the scenes. Sure. Obviously in the auto industry, what's under the hood is first and foremost, that has to work, that has to be reliable. But the company itself has lots of considerations. For example, you mentioned that coming back into the North American marketplace 2015, you know, the, uh, the, the heads of Alfa Romeo didn't get together in September of 2014 and say, well, maybe we should try it, maybe we shouldn't. This is something that builds over a period of sure. years. It's a very, very carefully thought out you know, decision in terms of the engineering, the distribution network, the dealer network, the marketing, the public relations. I'm sure that's been a robust set of conversations which has taken Correct. place. And I think speaking to that point too, what is really cool with Alfa Romeo, you know, obviously, so Alfa Romeo's office, our engineering center, is completely separate from anything else at uh, you know, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. So they have a dedicated team. It was actually led by two senior managers from Ferrari. They were put on this team. They had like about a thousand engineers, and that's how they developed this vehicle, this program. And it was done all on their own. So that's why we were able to develop an all-unique engine, unique uh, transmission, unique you know, uh, architecture platform, just to make sure we, you know, it is a true Alfa Romeo. And that's on the engineering side. In Correct. parallel with that, you had the market entry considerations, yep. the public relations, the advertising, the promotion, the messaging that takes place, which has to be in lockstep with the development yep. on the engineering side. Yep, and for sure, and we have we have a dedicated Alfa Romeo team in North America to speak to that point. You know, like all I do, I live and breathe Alfa Romeo every day, 365 out of year. So, so you're you said you have a, a unique transmission to the product. Yep. So, so it's not based on any of the, the ZFs or the NAG boxes? Or so it's, like it's a ZF transmission we have, but it was mm -hmm. developed for the Alfa Romeo Julia. Okay. Yeah, so it's not, it's not shared with any other vehicle right. we have in our lineup. Dual wet clutch, single wet clutch? It's a, uh, it's torque, a, converter? It's a torque converter transmission, yeah. Actually, it's amazing. The, the, the car shifts in 100 milliseconds. Right, right. You know, that's, like, that's why when you said that, I was like, yeah. dual wet clutch? Yep. But it's a torque converter. Yep, Interesting. Correct. Yeah. Keep going, Eric. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this stuff. You guys just going back and forth with the stats. Well, and it, it's also interesting. And, and what I think one of the other things that's interesting is you guys haven't gone and electrified the car to be a performance adder. Correct. Um, you're you're leaving it as a as a driving car. Yeah, that's actually a, a very good point. You know, like a lot of times you obviously see the you know the e-boost technology that's coming out um, with this vehicle. Yeah, it's a it's a twin turbo V6 engine. You know, like. It's, it's how it's supposed to be, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm, I'm biased. <laughs> now, are you doing things like playing with lean burn to keep the boost up when you're off throttle? Yep, yep. So we do that. Actually, the, the, it's, the cool part is about it too. With our uh, the, the V6 engine, also has a cylinder deactivation. So once you are, you know, you drive, you know, normal traffic or you know on the highway, you know, 65 miles an hour, it will shut down three of the six cylinders to again in increase uh, fuel economy. We all know at the end of the day, it's like. You know, you're not going to hit the throttle hard every time. Right. Just when you want to do it, the car is there to deliver. So, okay. very interesting. Yep. Very, and then, very interesting. It's speaking of technology, so for example, on our 280 horsepower, correct? It's a single turbo on our direct injection mm -hmm. multi-air engine, which actually came from Ferrari Formula One technology. We have a twin scroll turbo. So what we use, we use you probably know, we use two exhaust systems, right. so you always have ultimate pressure. You know, you, you reduce your turbo lag significantly because of that, and that's one of the benefits we've seen, and also in the reviews from the press that they really enjoy. This car takes off when you want it to take off. Now, now you also said you know that you can change the modes, and, and you know obviously you're changing your steering, you're changing your transmission sharpness, uh, you're probably changing the throttle pedal mapping. Yep, for sure. Um, are you also changing shock uh, settings? Are that's, you, a, that's a good are point. Are yep. adaptive dampers? Yep, we have adaptive dampers. So if you drive the, uh, if, if you buy a Julia, you have the option of getting the adaptive uh, suspension. 
quadrifolio, yes, you have it. So as soon as you go to race mode, it will automatically turn on the adaptive suspension, but you always have the option, even in natural mode, uh, to, to make the suspension more firm, you know, based on, on your driving as well. So, yeah, so your compression valve, you're changing yep. your compression valve. Is there going to be a multiple choice exam after this? No, it's, uh, it's so going to be. So I can it's continue no, to sit in this there's chair. There's no multiple choice. I, I want to make sure <laughs> that I pass the test, Eric. Very, very nice. It's good to talk to people that are passionate about cars. You know, like yeah. it's, at the end of the day, that's, you know, gets us, gets us going, gets me going every day. And that's why the show is here. That's why I like yeah. going to auto shows. Because, yeah. you know, you talk to people like you and it's all about the excitement and the memories and the technology, even if you look at other OEMs, you know, what's out there, what's going on. I mean, it's, you know, hey, I could be selling dishwashers, you know? Besides mm -hmm. the New York Auto Show, what would be considered to be the key auto shows for, you know, manufacturers so, world? Yeah, worldwide, I mean, obviously you got, uh, you know, Germany, Frank Frankfurt, you got yep. for Asia, you got Shanghai is a big auto show, which is it's actually- in two weeks. Yep, it's in two weeks. I'm actually going to go there as well. Um, and um, but for the U.S., the big ones are obviously Detroit Auto Show is a big auto show. We got the Los Angeles Auto Show, which is a big one, end of the year. And then um, obviously New York is, is a big show for us as well. So about half a dozen shows that yep. are the key shows. Yep, yeah, the key shows. Yep, yep. And that's what you see. You still see a lot of you know. That's why the new product gets introduced, and that's why we choose New York. Because if you really take a look at the New York market, I mean, there's no better market to introduce an SUV. You know, this market is significantly all-wheel drive. Our vehicles are standard all-wheel drive. New on York, New York, the city, so nice. They named it twice. That's right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah. So no, oh, go ahead. All right. So your all-wheel drive system. How are you providing the drive? To the front wheels, is it up to sixty percent? Uh, okay, up to sixty yep. percent. So it's a variable torque split. Yep. So the cool part is for this car too. It's a rear-wheel drive bias vehicle. So even if you get a all-wheel drive system, it still is a rear-wheel drive bias. So if you go into a turn, right. you can still feel the back end kind of kick out because it will, you know, obviously gives you that feeling. Because we know again, yeah, all-wheel drive still steer with the, with the pedal if you yep. want. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So it's, it's really cool. So we are, you know, it's uh, again Stelvio standard uh, all-wheel drive. The Julia comes standard with rear-wheel drive. You know, obviously, uh, otherwise it'd be hard to have a rear-wheel drive bias. But right. the uh, and then um, the Quattrofolio is standard a rear-wheel drive on a Julia, only available on a rear-wheel drive. If you do the Stelvio Quattrofolio version, that is uh, standard all-wheel drive as well. So. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you Thanks, so much, yeah. Peter, Thank for you. all of the terrific so that come and visit the uh, New York Auto Show over the next two weeks. Come by Alfa Romeo and say hello to Peter. Tell him that you saw him on Be Terrific. And thank you, awesome. sir, for Thanks being with us. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Real pleasure. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back after a short break.